Guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a diabetes insipidus. In this video, I'm going to be only the diabetes insipidus can be broken down into two essential points. One is going to be known as diabetes insipidus nephrogenic, and one can be known as, I believe, the um, pituitary gland diabetes insipidus. Essentially, uh, guys, this this video is going to contain the definition, explanation about diabetes insipidus, and it'll make your life very simple because I basically have a picture. I have I have a, a a photograph which is a memory photograph which will allow you to easily remember all the symptoms for diabetes insipidus, which will be towards the end of the video because I want to build the basis with the definition of diabetes insipidus. So, guys, what essentially is diabetes insipidus? It is the net loss of the water, loss of water. It is due to excess loss of solutes due to the passage of quantity of dilute uh, urine. This essentially leads to decreased ECF, decreased uh, inter uh, intracellular fuel, and increased osmolarity. So guys, I have given you guys a big definition. What does it mean? Basically, it means the loss of solute. And as we know that the water loves to follow, or in other words, it loves to follow the salt. So anywhere where these ions lost salt, then therefore there be the loss of water. And what will happen is that your urine become very very diluted because in your how is how is water being lost? How are solids being lost? They mean lost through the urine. What does this do? Of course, it decreases the amount of extracellular fluid, it decreases intracellular fluid, and it increases osmolarity. Well, this increases osmolarity as there is less solute guys now let's move on towards the uh, the hormonal part about it um, like I was saying there's a nephrogenic diabetes insipidus which is the one we're discussing today and the central diabetes insipidus is more endocrinology which will be discussed later so guys basically ADH is not functioning um, it's not that ADH is not functioning you are you, in diabetes insipidus your pituitary gland will still be producing ADH it's just that the receptors that are present I believe in your uh, uh, the distal convoluted tubule and the convoluted tubules are not working these receptors are known as B2 or V2 not too sure but these are not working so therefore the hormone adh it needs to bind to the receptor v2 or b2 it is unable to do that so therefore water is not being resorbed as we know adh we everyone knows the function i'm pretty sure a lot of people know the function of adh which is that it reabsorbs water when your adh is not being able to bind to the receptor to initiate the reaction of reabsorbing water before it is not being reabsorbed so therefore um the, there is going to be highly diluted urine in large amounts is going to be secreted and the plasma osmolarity increases in stimulation the possibility uh, so guys basically what happens is that now your body is like oh i'm i'm secret i'm my i'm secreting too much water i need to start reabsorbing water because if i secrete too much water i'm just be thirsty i'll be thirsty the whole day so your body's going to do feedback mechanism is like it's very simple feedback mechanism is that when your body's thirsty secretes adh so thirsty secrete the adh but now it's not able to um, but so, so now your body's doing the same thing because your body does not know that your b2 v2 receptors are not working so it's just going to be secreting adh it's just going to be secreting adh it's just going to be secreting adh because you're thirsty right but you're just going to have a very the hormone be very very high in the blood um and as we know, receptors are not working, feed my mechanism, your, your body's going to be like thirsty, secrete more ADH, but the receptors aren't working, so that brings a problem. But guys, how can you remember this? Well, guys, it's very, 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 very similar to diabetes mellitus type 2. Diabetes mellitus type 2, I believe so, the tyrosine kinase, I believe so, these receptors are not working, so therefore cells cannot take up insulin, and therefore insulin really, really increases in blood. Same thing over here. Uh, ADH increases in blood because the receptors are not taken in, but your feed mecha feedback mechanism of thirsty secret more ADH is still happening. ADH will be high in the circulatory in blood. It will be enemy infected from principal cells. So guys, now we, over here we have a, a photo memory, like I said, a photo memory, which will help you remember the um, symptoms. First of all, we have a toilet over here, but on the toilet, uh, first of all, this is going to be a toilet, and next to the toilet, you have your bed. So basically, guys, and remember, and, and below that, you have a cup shaped thing. So basically, um, imagine this like as uh, imagine you have a cup in which you put your toilet and your and your bed. So first of all, the first thing is that the, the toilet it will represent a polyuria. You need to use the water. You need to secrete. You need to excrete urine a lot. The next thing, two number two will represent is the bed. Is that and knocked urea because at night you'll have to do a lot of urine. You'll have to excrete a lot of urine, and the and the last 
thing is going to be polydyspia. I believe polydyspia means, and then um, uh, number four, number five is going to be decreased intracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid is very simple because if you're extremely low water, then then and that water is an essential part of the any fluid in the in the body. I believe so. So it'll decrease inter intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. And the sixth thing is going to be the body, the increase in body osmolarity. These are represented by the dots over here. Uh, sorry, guys. I want uh, number three polydyspia. Obviously, if you need to, you're gonna be very thirsty. This is gonna be this is gonna be represented by the cup below. The cup below is because uh, when you're thirsty, you, of course, you get a cup of water. So when you're polydyspia, you're very thirsty. Intracellular food and extracellular food decreases osmolarity increases and the seventh thing is that your mm, urine specific um, gravity is going to be less than 1.005 and the osmolarity be less than 2 200 all of this guy specific gravity and osmolarity is indicated by the cup which can be referred to as a weighing machine as well so that'll help you remember that so guys these are the symptoms these are the definition this was the explanation i hope you guys found this very useful about diabetes insipidus i'll try my best to reply your comments it's, been, it's i hope i guys helped you thanks for taking your time to watch my video hope to see you guys next time